Hello YouTube land, it's Debbie from the Canadian Crotchetter. I'm going to try to do this real quick. I've got a very busy day. I'm on the hunt for a turkey and I guess the turkeys are not out yet for the holiday season. So I'm having a hard time finding a big turkey. I should have put in my order. Uh, I mean I live in farm area <laughs> and, but it's too late to put in the order. I have to have a turkey for Saturday. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I'm going to try to do this real quick. The first thing that I made was real, really quick. It's the Zines and Rogers um, Chevron Granny. But this is made in the Loops and Threads Barcelona. And the colorway is Mocha. How nice did this turn out? I love it. I love it. I love the colors. It's all the little, the fall colors with a little bit of uh, um, teal in there. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's great. So that's a real quick thing. Like, I mean, I think I've got it under an hour. Uh, so easy and literally mindless. So I've got that done. The second item that I'm, I'm going to show you, it took me a while to do. Um, only because I was doing other things. So it took me about two weeks to do. And it doesn't look like it's supposed to look. Um, this pattern is the Tri Peak Fade by Holly Whedon. Come on, focus. And she also has a YouTube channel, Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast. Now I've done her other uh, patterns and they're all well written and so is this one. Very um, thorough. She even gives you a separate, a separate separate attachment that has all of the lines but I didn't want to waste ink it was silly me I didn't want to waste ink printing off 18 pages or something like that or whatever however many pages it was so I kept track of the look at that oh I kept track of all the lines as I did them so the reason it doesn't I don't know why it doesn't actually uh, uh, why it doesn't look like that I love this pattern because it's all half double crochet and I thought, wow, that's mindless. I can watch my YouTubers and do this and no worries. Uh, but I made a mistake somewhere because the pattern calls for 362 rows. I got 320. So somewhere along the line, I've lost 40 rows and, and I didn't even realize I get to the end and I'm like, why is there like so many short rows? And I'll show you exactly why. Let me show you. I'm going to take the middle. Oh, come on. And just take the middle. And I'll show you. I have no idea how this, how I could have done this. You see this peak? It's supposed to be the same size as this peak. It's not. Somewhere I've lost many 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 rows and I don't know and I don't know if Holly watches but Holly if you're watching I apologize for mucking up your pattern it is a great pattern but I guess I was just too immersed in my youtuber you watching YouTube to pay attention but anyway the point is is such a versatile um, scarf that you're not even gonna know that one end is smaller because you just kind of wrap it around and uh, it is very versatile and because it's using like fingering weight yarn it's very like um, thin like it's not bulky or in any way I think it looks good and we have a we have a row of hooks in our family room where we hang all our hats and scarves and coats so that they're easy as you walk out so I usually just hang whatever I'm using that week right there and that's where this is because uh, it's just wrap and go it's really really nice I like it but I made a mistake and the uh, yarn is so squishy and soft oh yes and it was living in my butterfly bag that I got from Jane at Scraptastic Yarns I think she calls them ball sacks uh, this is an awesome bag I loved it. Uh, anyway, I got lots left. Lots left. Um, I'm actually starting a fingering weight blanket. 
granny square blanket. So for all these uh, fingering weight yarns that I have left over, I'm just adding them to an edit. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, somebody's trying to get hold of me. Anyway, uh, the yarn that I used was Sweet Georgia, which I believe is this one, Sweet Georgia yarn in the Tough Love sock. And then the other two, they don't even give me the colorways on here, are Log House Cottage Yarns, and they're a Canadian company. Actually, all three are Canadian companies. So, yeah, it's, it, there's that blue, then there's that kind of like bluish, bluish teal, and then there's a speckled yarn in here, as you can see. Beautiful. I bought these yarns when I went to St. John's, specifically for this pattern. Anyway, I love the pattern. I have to do it again because I can't just leave it like this. I have to do, I'm not about to frog back that many rows. So I'll just wear it as is and then I'll find some other yarn to do the pattern again because it, it is a great, great pattern. Uh, anyway, my mistake, but it's still a lovely mistake. And the last thing that I, I made, uh, this literally took me one evening to do. So I was, uh, I don't know where I saw a post, somebody was making a Grinch scarf. And I, I saw it and I thought, oh, I gotta make that because my husband loves Grinch. And I waited two days before printing it off. I went and got the yarn. And so two days later I go to print it off and they've taken it off. And it was heart hook home. And so I emailed her and I said, well, I can't find that pattern anymore. And she said, no, do, she doesn't want to touch on infringement uh, laws or anything like that. They've decided to take it off. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so it's a corner to corner. So the corner to corner is not a problem. That part's not a problem at all. I can do that. The problem came, the appliques. I suck at it. So I thought I'd have someone helping me. So, but I didn't. So they didn't have the pattern, but I made it anyway. I muddled through. I made so many different eyes until I came up with these two that looked somewhat like the picture. And then I gave them a nose. And one thing that I realized making this is I am horrible with top stitching. This is puckering. It's puckering. So I gotta, I gotta play with top stitching. But that being said, I think he turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm in the midst of making another one. Uh, my husband, I actually made this for my husband, but he said he wants to make, uh, he wants me to make three or four of them for a few of the guys at the office. And the only thing that this is missing, so the idea is that you, this is his hat, so you have it like this, and then I'm going to add a pom-pom probably on this corner. So that's his hat. So anyway, um, I think it turned out okay, considering it was my first time making appliques and I didn't follow a pattern. I kind of just winged it and uh, yeah, I came up with that. I thought he turned out pretty good. So this one will be mine because he's not, he's puckering. He's definitely puckering here. So this one will be mine and then I'll make, uh, I'm going to practice the top stitching and get better and make a couple more. So. That's what I got done. Now, I have one acquisition, and it's not yarny per se. I was on Instagram, and I came across this Beaker the Goose. Beaker the Goose lost is an African goose that was rescued because he got into a fight with a mink and lost half his beak. I'm going to show you the picture of him. And so he's at a, a, an animal sanctuary, mostly ducks and geese and things like that. So it's run by a couple of people and to raise money, what they do is they take the feed bags that, that they buy for the animals and convert them into bags. And they're very reasonable if you're not in Canada. They're very reasonably priced. I think I paid like 15 or $16 for per bag, but the shipping. If you live in Canada, be prepared for the shipping. The shipping was, was not cheap. But anyway, I just love the idea of supporting this farm and they're reusing 
the bags that they buy the feed in to create more money or to make more money to buy more food. I love it. I love the idea. So the two bags that I got, so you can see it's, it's a feed bag. It's very sturdy. It makes a great shopping bag. Uh, the first one I got was with the piggy. I'm trying to show you. Sorry, it's a little bent out of shape because it was in shipping, but I'm sure that if I just flatten it out for a little while, it'll, it'll take out all the wrinkles. Anyway, so I got the pig, and it's got really sturdy handles. You can see that they've sewn right through the bag. And uh, yes, and they, the, the Etsy shop that I got it from is called Bags for Beaker. Hold on. Bags for Beaker. Now, if you're going to buy shopping bags, this would make amazing project bags. Why not help along the way? I mean, and they're reasonably priced. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not like this. They're not fancy dancy like this. But they're purposeful and they're, they're very practical. And you're helping out. So that was my first one in the Piggy 11. And the second one that I got was the sheep. How ingenious is that? Like seriously. Um, very, very sturdy. Very, like the, the, the fabric that they use for the handles is very sturdy. Very well made. Um, ingenious. That's all I can say is ingenious and it is a great way for them to make money for to feed these rescued animals. Anyway, I highly, um, highly urge you to check out their Instagram page or their Etsy page, which I will leave both down below. Check them out. Help them out. Um, I think it's a fabulous idea, and I will definitely be buying more. And as a matter of fact, my daughter picked out a few, but she said she will put in the order with me so that we maybe save a little bit on the shipping. So, um, yeah, she's, she's going to use it. I mean... And, and like I said, you're helping these animals feed these animals. Like you're helping this farm feed these animals. Awesome idea. Anyway, Beaker and I have to say goodbye uh, for now. Uh, I will be back on Friday to do the, my little uh, draw. But uh, in the meantime, I hope everyone has a wonderful week. And we will talk soon.